Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another on the road video with me, Peter, the master of hobbits, today in beautiful Amsterdam. Yesterday was all about tourism and seeing the sights and doing the boat rides on the canal and everything. Uh, but right now, we're sitting by the Arends Nest, which is a classic Dutch beer bar that I was told by Ego, aka Nice Beer, uh, was a must visit. I'll show you some shots of how beautiful it is here. But yeah, it's such an idyllic location. The weather today is all right. Uh, it's a bit cloudy and then it's a bit sunny. It's not like crazy, but it's been nice. It's like fun walking around the city. So this is a city that's mainly known for, you know, stove waffles and the pancakes. Of course, also the red light district and weed. But they apparently have a very good beer scene that we're going to be checking out today. And Igor said the first thing I need to drink in Amsterdam should be this Neuborg uh, Pilsner, Chateau Neuborg Pilsner from Gulpena. It's a macro brewery in the Netherlands, and this is like a noble hopped pils. So yeah, this is gonna be the first beer of the day. Look at that, crystal clear. You can see my face. So white head, let's check out the aroma on this one. Husky, grainy, spicy, noble hop. It smells quite all right. Yeah, actually quite like a, a decent grain crackery profile. Like toasted crackers, biscuits. Yeah, n subtle floral, noble hop character, spiciness. Let's try it, try it. cheers. That's actually not a half bad macro pills. It's quite bitter, I like it. Peppery, grassy, spicy, floral, really nice high bitterness, slightly grainy sweet profile. This doesn't taste like crazy macro. This just tastes like a fairly good German pills there. There's almost like connotations to Yeva because it's fairly bitter, but that's very nice. And Nana is also drinking a beer that we're gonna try here. There's another beer from them. This is Korenwolf, which is a wit beer. Yeah, that smells more macro. That smells, it almost smells like the, oh, it's Hefeweizen from, what are they called? Oh, it's Kaiserdom. It almost smells a bit like that. But then you do have that coriander taste and the aftertaste. In Belgium, in Brussels, I went to Pöschenkeller. I unfortunately didn't shoot a video there. We went there twice. And one of the times I got a glass of really fresh uh, Witbier from St. Bernardus. And that's like the best Witbier I think I've had on this trip in Bel Belgium and whatnot. It was just so fresh and awesome tasting. This is, it tastes quite macro. It's, it's half decent. I'd much rather have the pills. Mm, so yeah, I'll, I'll give this a thumbs to the side. Maybe a slight thumb up, but definitely a, a big thumbs up for, for the macro pills here. It's actually quite good for a macro beer. Much better than Heineken, which is everywhere here. But yeah, we're gonna stroll around to the city, we're gonna hit up a couple bottle shops, and we're probably gonna finish the video at Hit Lagerhus. I'm probably pr butchering the pronunciation, but it's a place where we're gonna get some food. They have a crazy bottle list, lots of lager, and things like that. It's one of the must visits in the city, and we're kind of pressed on time, because tonight we're also doing Anne Frank's house, and we're leaving tomorrow. But um, yeah, it should be fun, should be fun. And I've heard that they have Buffcon bottles. So that should be interesting. But yeah, cheers, and here's to another day of beer shenanigan from uh, the vacation this year. Mm. In Western Europe, really damn tasty stuff. Cheers, guys, and see you at the next spot. So the next couple of spots we decided to visit in Amsterdam were bottle shops. The first place was Stark. And Stark is the biggest bottle shop of beer in Amsterdam. I think they said they at one point had over 3,000 different beers available, which is just nuts. And as you see here, they also really knew how to store stuff. Most of the hoppy releases and like sours, kettle sours, super fruited sours, things like that, things, beers that are really, you know, in need of being stored cold, were stored cold. You could also fill growlers, as you can see here, uh, which is really dope with lots of fresh keg beers. And they, of course, also had some hidden gems on the shelves, like these. And, uh, yeah, also a great selection of yeah, beers from all over the world, like Lambic, for instance, uh, as you see here. And then I found this little gem, <laughs> a can of Four Loco. I did not expect that. Next up was the Beer Koenig. A really nice, cozy little spot. Uh, also a great selection of both bottles, cans, of course, and glassware. A little bit more traditional selection here, or at least bigger, that is. 
And as you see, they also stocked some fridges with uh, a lot of IPAs and things like that, and a lot of local beer. They also had some rare gems sitting there, uh, some Cantillons, and some were opened. I think these were not for sale. I actually failed to ask, but uh, I think it was just like the owners that had them stored there and op opened them for special occasions. But both places are must-visit bottle shops if you're a beer geek and you're in Amsterdam. So we just had a tour of some bottle shops, which was really cool. Uh, crazy selections at both Stack and Beer uh, Very, very huge selection of different beers. But right now we went to Hid Lagerhuis. A few of you guys recommended that we go here. And uh, we, uh, sometimes they have Bofkant, but right, uh, and also Bokkerreiter, but right now they do not have any of those. They have something also really cool from the Czech Republic. They have some metaphor. And we're trying a bottle of Defiance. They had a few on tap, but a lot of them were unfortunately already sold out, but that's how it is. Usually these kind of beers are really, really small amounts. So uh, the one we got, Defiance, is a mixed fermentation beer with Nitra grapes, which are great grapes from Slovakia. Uh, and it's been aged with the grapes in oak barrels for 18 months. Apparently because of the 2020 harvest being really bad, uh, they, they did not have a full set of crops to, to make wine with it, the winemaker they got it from. So uh, Metaphor was luckily offered to get the, uh, get the grapes to use them in, in, in some beer. This is a late harvest in early November and it says there's very ripe berries were then put uh, to macerate in the beer. So I'm wondering if they're like, um, if they're gonna be sweet or whatever. I usually not, it's spontaneously fermented beer. Or it's not spontaneously fermented, it's, it's mixed culture. Uh, but they do wild ales. They do do a few that are spontaneous, which is really cool, but um, again, they're sold out in a lot of it. But let's try this really beautiful ruby red color. Let's smell the aroma. Ooh, really, really musty, woody aromas and loads of leather, like a really intense leathery aroma, almost like almost like sheepskin or something like that, if you've ever been to like farms like wool or something it's pretty crazy but loads of deep uh, grape quality it smells really good touches of oak the grape is really forward the more you smell it it's like really deep red grape aromas let's try it cheers oh yeah really intense grape profile really deep tannic really tannic red grape Really well balanced acidity. Really, really nice. Tobacco, vanilla, leather, oak, dried dates. Like almost like smoke, like smoky tobacco vibes. Yeah, this was actually a good pick. <laughs> Haven't had much metaphor, but this is crazy good. It's super well balanced. This is going to be fun to see how it changes when it. Uh, and right on time, we got some food. <laughs> Yeah, this is really good. It's quite young, but this is something that will age really, really well, I think. Such a deep, intense, also like earthy, musty grape flavor. It's really good. Mm. Fantastic. Almost like pine and resin. Pine resin. Interesting. Here we go. This is a Dutch specialty bitter ball. And we've already had like croquettes and a lot of different things from the snack bars. <laughs> Mm. Hot. Very similar. It's like a beef filling or something, I think. And then, I don't know if I can taste the beer, but there's like some herbs and there's spices in there. It tastes like a bit like stew in a fried format. But it's nice. It's a really good beer snack. <laughs> so we just got our food at Hit Lagerhuis. And uh, Nana's having a burger. And I'm having some classic Dutch fruit. It's from the south. It's called Surfleisch and it's a beef stew from Limburg and made with, you get a side of applesauce and you get some fries and then I think it might be a fleet sauce as they do with a lot of the fries here but it's, uh, yeah, it looks very much like the food I had a lot of in Belgium. Lots of stews and things of this nature but let's have a bite here. Mm. It almost smells, tastes like, uh, like caramelized onions in or something. But yeah, it's definitely a little bit sweeter. Maybe some brown sugar or something. But it's a very it's very similar to a lot of the Danish cuisine. 
Could also be there's a bit of applesauce in the stew. Almost like clove cinnamon or something like that. A little bit of a festive spice. But one thing they're really good at here in Amsterdam fries. Yesterday we went on a, like a food crawl. We had amazing fries. We also had tonkotsu ramen, but let's try one of the fries here. Yeah, very nice. I'm really not sure what that sauce is. It was safe to you. Okay guys, we just got cut short a bit because the camera ran out of battery and I wasn't smart enough to think ahead and charge it. But the food was really nice. Very classic pub fare. The stew almost reminded me a bit of one of the dishes we had in Cologne, which was a, like, it was also, like it was cuts of beef with a brown gravy uh, that might have been horse meat <laughs> or veal but it was similar to that because it had a sweetish flavor and it was also with applesauce but it was really nice the croquettes were really nice the metaphor beer was awesome that's like a, a huge one and a half almost like 175 almost two thumb up beer i think if i had to rate it it'd be like 93 ish or something i think it needs to age a bit to develop a bit more funkiness and whatnot but it had a really cool flavor profile and one of the things i really dug was it almost has like a flavor of cedar wood and while the camera was off, we also just had a quick couple tastes of some Dutch beer. We had some Neville, uh, and we had some Tecome, which was a wild ale with angelica root. It was pretty interesting, not that funky, but it had like a lot of like interesting, sweetish, almost like, uh, like was it like minty or something? It was no, no, it, yeah, but it's a different flavor, and it almost tastes like. Uh, a Danish like kids champagne boost flavor profile that you get in like ice creams and sodas and soft drinks which was a bit interesting and then the commas uh, Altbier was pretty classic stuff it was malty bready soft easy going nothing like crazy over the top or anything just like nice classic beer uh, but yeah this is a really cool spot very good traditional food pop fair uh, with some awesome beer and the fun thing is the selection of crazy bottles and they bring it with the fun uh, the uh, the fireworks and everything. I don't know what you call one of those. It's kind of like a, we call, what do we call Stjernekast on Danish as you light on fire. It almost looks like that or something. Um, but yeah, it was a really fun way when they serve the bottle. So yeah, that's one of the main reasons also to go here is because yeah, they'll have Metaphor, sometimes Buff Cunt, sometimes Bucker Rider. It depends on what they can get. Uh, so yeah, that was really cool. So now we're probably, we've, we've got time for one more spot before we have to go to Anne Frank's house. And I think we're gonna go to Beer Temple or photos depending on what's closest and how it's easy to get to Anne Frank's house after but must visit spot that's for sure so cheers guys so we have made it to the probably unfortunately final spot of the beer tour of uh, Amsterdam we also wanted to do photos but in around an hour we have to be at Anne Frank's house it's quite far from here so I don't think we'll make it maybe after i don't know we also have to call it quits early today because we're leaving really early tomorrow morning to go back to denmark but we're at beer temple this was one of the more really famous historic craft beer bars in amsterdam for releasing loads of american beer they had lots of american beer on tap before covid and now they're finally back after covid opening up again uh, with American releases. They also have Dutch beer, so we made sure to get some Dutch beer as well because we are in the Netherlands. I also wanted to get some Dutch beer. Um, so yeah, we went inside. It's a really cool spot. It almost reminds me of Beer Revolution in uh, in San Francisco or in is it Oakland, I think. It had a similar vibe with all the stickers and flags and all, all these things. Uh, so we got two beers. We got a, usually I don't want to go for the hazies, but we got a recommendation uh, to try this one from Hit Iche, which is quite famous. It says Macro Brewery now, so I'm guessing someone might have bought them up. I don't know if it's Heineken, uh, but they're also starting to be everywhere in Denmark. But this is a hazy IPA with Mosaic, I think. There's actually no speaking of. Uh, well, here we go Mosaic, Centennial, and Columbus. Let's try it. Yeah, it's quite dank. That was what I was being told. Like weedy centennial is really forward actually with like lots of grapefruit. It almost smells like a bit like a hazy IPA with a bit of a West Coast flair without it being like really West Coast. That's a pretty decent hazy. Fruity, juicy, slightly overripe, slightly dry. I think it's more dank on the aroma. I'm getting like a bit more of like a would say blueberry vibe, a little bit of grapefruit, citrus pith. It has a good amount of sweet esters. I'm almost 100% sure this is the Verdant IPA yeast. 
it really reminds me that it has like a slightly dusty, like tropical yeasty feel. It could be something else too, it just reminds me of it. But yeah, there's a big amount of yeast esters. I think this is something for you, Nana. <laughs> It's more of a beer where I'm thinking, yeah, I'm getting sick of hazies, and then it's like I've had a couple sips, and that's enough for me. But for what it is, it is good. Um, it is a good hazy IPA. But let's. I think people are saying the best hazy IPA in the Netherlands is Folking It. I haven't seen it on tap anywhere so far, but we've got a can. But not for me, unfortunately. For my father in law, because he loves hazies. Okay, the next beer is a double dry hub West Coast IPA. And when I saw that, I was like, yes, we need more West Coast. So. This is from Aslan in collaboration with Odd by Nature Brewing Company. And this is Hella Hops, 6.5%. It's got Nelson Citra and Waimea. Oh my god. What a coincidence. <laughs> my kind of hops. Um, yeah, so they have 50 taps here as well. I mean, they have some beer bars here with loads of beer. It's pretty nuts. So slightly hazy. Looks kind of like the modern West Coast approach. So, you know, like fairly you know, light colored beer. There is a bit of like an orange hue, otherwise it's quite yellow. It looks like maybe they have a bit of carapils or something in there, but maybe even Munich, I don't know. It looks nice to take out the aroma as well. Much more me. Pithy, like uh, citrus, grapefruit zest. Definitely some uh, Nelson, which smells quite nice. It's got that like uh, really nice, like gooseberry aroma. It's not crazy dank, but I need to smell something. It's really hard to smell or taste something. It's hard to smell from these glasses. Yeah, that's modern West Coast. It's really lacking bitterness though. Really, severely. Modern West Coast, when they're done right, they are also bitter. This is like almost like drinking a clear hazy IPA. Almost, it almost tastes like a hazy IPA that went clear. Nelson is there, which is quite nice with like that pithy citrus limey lemon, a bit of gooseberry. That's like the most dominant flavor profile, I think. Citrus there also with a classic like just like overripe sweet citrus flavor, which is quite nice. There's also sweet tropical fruits, like generic sweet tropical fruits. Um, and it's it's fairly dry, but it has a sweet hop profile. And I think a lot of people will associate that with like sweet malt, pouring sweet malt. But I don't think so because you can feel dryness of your t on your tongue too. So I think it's maybe more a, ca a case of sweet hop flavor. But I think it could have both more CO2 and more bitterness and for me to be really excited. Like this is no way near the level of North Park and Slice and McElhaney and some of these guys. Well, McElhaney is a bit more classic, but I think they, they, they make better beers. Also because it's a bit more restrained, but it's an American import. I don't know how fresh the cakes and whatnot, but it, it's still nice beer. Both are nice beers. And it's a nice spot. I love how it looks inside. If, if I stayed in Amsterdam for longer, I was here with some friends, this would be a place that would be really fun to hit up because it's really cool and cozy. Uh, and it's got that, again, American bar vibe. <laughs> like, again, it reminds me of Beer Revolution. But yeah, nice stuff. Worth a shot to visit this for sure. Uh, have some Dutch beer, have some American craft beer. Again, we'll see with photos. I doubt we'll make it there. So just for the sake of continuity, I think we're gonna cut it here. And if we do make it, we'll have that in the end. So if you guys enjoyed this quick tour of the uh, uh, beer scene here in Amsterdam, let me know what you thought of it. You probably had some places you wish we could go to. If you have some places to recommend to people, you can put them down below in the description. There's a few uh, microbreweries that's outside the city as well. Valhalla is one of them. We just got some beers to bring home. Uh, we didn't get to go there either because, again, we're short on time. We're also doing touristy things. But yeah, let us know if you have like anything you think people should visit when they're in Amsterdam. It's a fun city. There's loads of things going on. So it's definitely worth a visit, both if you're a beer geek, but also if you just want to experience the city. It's, it's, it's really nice. And a massive shout, shout out to everyone who gave suggestions for this entire trip. You're great. So if you guys been here, been to any of the spots we hit up, let us know what you thought. Uh, as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up, enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm going to say cheers and some West Coast IPA. And see you guys in another on the road video.